phone sessions. First of all, I'd have you do an exhaustive list. Now the list will be something I say start at birth. And I say, what do you mean start at birth? Start before birth. What does that mean? Well, past life? No. I said, you know, you know, like with, with myself, you know, my mother was pregnant at 14. I mean, that's before my birth. You know, those emotions before your birth do affect how people treat you. They affect how they act with you. So before your birth, you know, like if your mom was raped on a snowbank, well, that would have an emotional effect on how mom and, and the family would treat you. So start before birth. And she said, well, at birth, my sister hated me. She was jealous. Well, that's birth, probably before birth. And then those emotional drivers in those situations will influence how you respond to them and, how, and the information, the emotional highway that starts being built for you. So I always say start with birth. Start with experiences, any experience you remember. If you don't have any childhood experiences, well, you can't list it. But list what you do know. And then you list individuals, like, for example, if you have a big brother, and big brother's always picked on you. And then you say big brother, and you go, he held me out of the water, he beat me up, he would say this, he would do this, he would do this. Every memory reference that would support it. Now, that's your list that's in the peace program that I want you to work. And then you'd go to, uh, I always do it, any physical, any emotional, any sexual abuse. And sometimes if it's not sexual abuse, it could be the very first sexual experiences. You know, the next door neighbor boy. Well, there's so much emotions in and around sex. There's so much emotional hurt in and around sex. And or even, I mean, so you go back and you start cleaning all this stuff and releasing it and let there be peace within those experiences. And then we go to school experiences. Guys, I have worked with so many people who have been traumatized, emotionally traumatized because of teachers. Not all teachers, just the bad ones, the ones who have problems. <laughs> so you know what that means. <laughs> but the smart ones are in this class, by the way, <laughs> because they're healing. And then uh, with teachers, uh, students, kids, I'm telling you what, there is so much belief system picked up in school you will not believe. You know, the 62-year-old man who thinks he's stupid, and yet he's a genius, and I said, well, how do you know? He said, because my second grade teacher said I was. He started crying right there, 62 years old. Because you know what happened? Automatically he regressed at, at second grade, feeling those emotions because the teacher didn't like his brothers either. So school experiences. It could be major moves, moving from, from grandma's house, moving to out in the country. It could be, it could be deaths of a dog. It could be because your dog, dad gave your dog away. I mean, we're talking about events that children, to, to us as adults, you say that shouldn't be a big deal, but to a child, that's their whole world. It could be just about anything. So anything, you start at that, and you start moving forward, any relationship, first boyfriend, first girlfriend, first, you know, all this stuff, because inside of us, we create a belief system about ourselves. And then as you start walking through the future, I always recommend the pivotal points in your life with individuals, mom, dad. I mean, there was an individual who came to me and he said, you know, his life actually changed because some kid on the bus picked on him every day going back and forth to school. Well, if you realize it, this is a little kid who knows nothing about the world, and so he's stuck on a bus, and he's starting to get beat up on and picked on, and so he thinks this is how the world is. Guess what? He always found a relationship where somebody would pick on him. Because he believed that's how the world was. So this is what we do. We start going back and we start looking at experiences, things that hurt, ex-husbands, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, whatever it is, deaths, grief and loss. And some people say, well, again, I don't remember anything about my childhood, but I suspect. Well, write down to you what you suspect. Because we can still change the emotional drivers behind it. That's how I do my, my first session. First session is always two hours. Always two hours. And when I start, and I really work hard to clean up everything in two hours. Huh. You know, believe it or not, I do pretty amazing work in two hours. And I want you to do the homework list because when I go through that list, I'm going to work really hard to clean it up and your life will change. That doesn't mean I get it all. Because you've been working for years to have your problems. Isn't that true? So that's how I do that.
And of course, you know, I do take credit cards. I do, if I do it over the phone, of course I take credit cards. Uh, PayPal, if you have PayPal, so. You have a question? Absolutely. First session is always two hours. Phone session, two hour session. And the nice thing is, with the two hour session over the phone, is they email me the list and I send and I and I may read through it and I'll kind of pick out and say, Do I want more of this? And I'll send it back to them and I'll have them clean, complete the list. Because see, I'm looking for this structure. I want to, you know, of course, you know, the EFT style, the EFT style is like you're chopping the limbs off the top. You know, you're chopping all the little things that you can see right now. And I'm looking for the deep deal. I'm looking for what the structure is, and I want to pull that whole tree out, roots and all, to where you're pretty clean of it, you know. And then we'll go back and clean it up. So that's basically how I do the first session. Um, you know, of course, I do seminars. Uh, as you well know, you're all here. But it's interesting. I've been getting emails, and this guy said, hey, we'll pay for your flights. We'll pay for your hotel room. We'll pay for this. Come to Turkey. And I said, ooh. Hey, Matt, you going to go to Turkey? So you never know. So if you know how to run a seminar, guys, I'll come and see you. <laughs> uh, how detailed? I mean, I, I got broad categories. I mean, how detailed do you do you want specific incidents uh, that, uh, you know, that, I mean, it's like a big list, and then how small do you want it to that, go? That's a good question. It's very good. All right. Now, so here's where the problem is usually. This is what will happen. Let's say, for example, you have a, I'm going to make up something. I have a fear of dogs, okay? So if you have the fear of dogs, okay, so you have the fear of dogs. Now, sometimes if you go in and say, I have this fear of dogs, and you leave that point right there, all right? Now, that's really basically a global, global, that's just general. Right. Okay, so what we want to do is, what is the structure? Remember we talked about fears and the structure? We go right back here to concept and belief. So this is the fear of dogs, and the question is how you know you have the fear of dogs. Uh, so then you go back, and you go, well, I know I have the fear of dogs because uh, John has a dog. And when I went to see John, I felt this fear, okay? Then I say, well, how do you know you have the fear of dogs? And then you start looking and listing every experience with the fear of dogs, and you'll always notice it'll go back to major experience. So it may go back to when you're five years old, and your next door neighbor's dog bit your finger. And then you'll have another experience with you went to see a girlfriend's house and they had a Doberman and he tried to bite you. Or you always felt these. So then this is how you know you have the problem. Now, see, if you go to this and you're going to say, uh, say, I have this fear of dogs. Even though I have this fear of dogs, I let it go, let it go, let it go. And you keep tapping and keep tapping and it doesn't go away. Well, the reason is is because you're not addressing the cause. That's the structure in which you handle it within. Now, the EFTers, now I, I do, a, you know, EFT is an is a emotional freedom technique. The EFTers will keep doing, even though I have this, even though I have this, even though I have this, without going to the structure. Now, they would say, the reason why I can't get rid of the fear of dogs is because there's psychological reversal. Well, what is psychological reversal? Psychological reversal is I have proof this is why I can't get rid of this. So we just go in and say, okay, why do you have the problem? How do you know? Do you have internal proof and references? As you release the references, all of a sudden the fear of dogs automatically disappear. So if you say, for example, if you, if you say I have, a, let's say, say you're divorced, and you say I have a fear of entering into a relationship, afraid to get intimate with somebody, all right? Well, here it is. This is a general problem. But I say, well, how do you know you have this problem? Well, then you go back and say, well, my first husband. And then you notice that the first husband, and you have these emotions of being rejected or feeling not good enough or not giving you attention. And then we start looking at the first boyfriend, the first experiences, and then we go back to the father, and I'll be darned. That's the same exact emotions you felt with your father. So you can say, I, you know, it's safe to have a loving relationship, but unless you get rid of your psychological, emotional attachments to it, you will never have a good relationship because you've got to heal your inner resource, resources and what you believe. So this is basically, you have to break it down. How do you know? Let's say, for example, you don't have memories of the fear of dogs. Well, how do you know you have a fear of dogs? Well, my heart is pounding 50 miles an hour. When I hear a dog, it, I feel this. 
when I see the teeth of the dog, or when I, whatever it is. So it's how you internally do it. So however you do it internally is what gives meaning to it. So, so if you have no memories of bad dogs, but you know you have the fear, ask yourself, how do I know I have the fear? Well, when I think of a dog, I have a picture of one growling at me. Internal process. 